Today we're going to be doing a head-to-head -head ice challenge to see if the Yeti Hopper 12 or the Yeti Rodi 15 is the best cooler for you. Let's dive right in. Hey there, my name is Adam, your friendly Sasquatch, and today we're going to be doing a second ice challenge of the Rodi 15 versus the Hopper Flip 12 made by Yeti. I've done one of these not too long ago, but apparently, according to all you keyboard warriors out there, I just did a terrible job. First, I didn't pre-chill the coolers, heaven forbid. Second, I did the test outside where there are other factors like sunlight, wind, and other things that could affect the testing results. Third, I didn't actually put any food in the coolers because, you know, it was just a test. And fourth, I didn't use the same amount of ice in each cooler. I thought I did, but when you look at the footage, it looks like I may have put a little more ice in the Hopper Flip 12. But have no fear, keyboard warriors. The test will be redone. In the name of science, we're going to get to the bottom of this. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take both these coolers and pre-chill them with one large, thin Yeti ice and one medium, thin Yeti ice in each cooler. Then we're gonna put them overnight into my entryway. There are no windows, no wind, and it stays a very stable 72 degrees morning, afternoon, and night. So perfect testing environment, really kind of boring for these coolers, but hey, in the name of science, we're gonna do it. Then I'm gonna put some pre-chilled sodas in here with seven pounds of ice and a Yeti medium ice block. Not the thin one, but the actual medium ones. I would do a large one because it fits in the bottom of the Hopper Flip 12 quite nicely but it doesn't fit well on the bottom of the Rodi 15. So we're gonna be using one medium plus seven pounds of ice that you get from the grocery store or gas station. That's gonna be our testing methodology. We're also gonna be using three different methods for tracking temperature in the coolers and plotting them on a chart, you know, so it looks scientific. First is I will have one of these wireless temperature gauges, you know, the ones you put on the outside of your house, inside each of these coolers so we can track the actual temperature of the sodas. Second will be my infrared gun. We can check the outside of the cooler in various locations and the room itself to make sure we are in a known testing environment. And third, I'm gonna get the infrared camera out, put some footage up so you can see exactly what's happening to the outside of the cooler and the surrounding environments. I don't think we could possibly do this test in a more scientific way, but let's go ahead and do the test. We'll look at the results and then you guys, the keyboard warriors, can tell me, did I do it correctly? In the name of science, the people must know. All right, without any further babble, let's get into it. Okay, to pre-chill each of these coolers, I'm starting the night before, and we're going to be using one large Yeti Thin Ice with one medium Yeti Thin Ice, which should be more than enough ice to cool this over the next 12 hours. And then I'm also gonna throw in a wireless temperature probe so I can track the temperature throughout this test. Again, one large Yeti ice, thin ice, and one medium Yeti thin ice. And then again, for this one, I'm also putting its own separate temperature probe in. I'm gonna use those temperature probes throughout the entire test, and I'm gonna graph them on a probably 12 hour basis. I will take measurements from these temperature probes about every 12 hours or so. And then we'll get to see when each of these coolers starts to warm up and uh, when they become non-food safe or about 45 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, these ice packs are just to pre-chill the coolers the night before. Tomorrow morning, I will put new ice packs in along with some bags of ice and some refreshments. Also, as a quick reminder, I've done a full review on each of these coolers on my channel. I'll leave links in the video description in case you're interested in learning more about each of these coolers. I think they're both great options for what they are, but to keep this video a little bit more short and to the point, we're gonna focus on the testing methodology itself. Okay, so here we are the next morning. Um, both coolers and terminal thermometers say 36 degrees, so they're good and pre-chilled. I let them chill overnight. I'm gonna go ahead and take out the two ice packs I put in last night. Put in a Yeti medium ice. This is the two pound version, not the thin ice. And then I'm gonna put in a bag of ice into each of these and we'll start um, monitoring the temperatures over the next few days. Popping these open. They're definitely cold. You can tell the walls of the cooler are nice and cold. So it's definitely nicely cold soaked. The ice packs have a little water in them, but they're not uh, anywhere close to fully melted. So that's also a good sign that we've got these as cooled off as possible. Okay, so I'm using seven pound bags of ice because that's what I could find at the grocery store readily available. 
Um, last time I did this test, I kind of split a couple bags of ice and it was hard to tell if each cooler had the same amount of ice in them. So for this test, we're gonna use one seven pound bag of ice and one medium ice block in each of these coolers so they have the exact same amount of ice. Again, trying to remove as many variables as possible. And then finally, we're gonna add six cans of soda to each cooler because that's what we use coolers for, right? We cool things off. So I had these cans of soda in my refrigerator um, overnight. So these are all at 45 degrees Fahrenheit, which is a good, you know, kind of food safe temperature. So we're gonna go ahead and put six cans in each of these coolers. I'm not gonna stack the cans. I'm gonna try and lay them side by side so they have as much exposure to the ice as possible. Again, just trying to replicate what you would actually use this cooler for. And then finally, we're gonna put back the temperature probe, which is in a waterproof bag, to make sure that it doesn't have any issues when the ice starts melting. I do wanna note that both these coolers still have room to put more beverages in, even with the two pound Yeti yeah, ice block, seven pounds of ice, and the six cans of soda. So that's good to see. Um, I'm just using six cans of soda as an easy reference point. Just so you can see what it looks like in the Yeti Hopper Flip 12, we got the six cans of soda on top of the ice with the thermometer on top. We'll go ahead and seal it up. And then here's the inside of the Rodi 15 so you can see what's going on. So for some additional data points, I'm gonna take my infrared temperature gun and take a couple measurements just so you can see what the baseline is for both these coolers. The inside of both these coolers is 36 degrees. The wall behind the cooler is 70 degrees. The top of the Rode 15 is 70.1 degrees. The top of the Hopper Flip 12 is 69.9 degrees. And we'll do the side here. So the front of the Rode 15 is 67.6 degrees, so a little bit cooler. And the front of the Hopper Flip 12 is 66.7 degrees. So you can tell the front and um, Sides of the coolers are a little bit cooler, so that kind of showing that the um, pre-chilling we did has completely cold soaked the coolers. The tops of the coolers are very similar to the uh, wall on the floor of this room, which is 70 degrees, uh, showing that these coolers are pretty efficient and aren't letting out a ton of heat. Okay, so here we are about 12 hours into the test, and uh, I'm not gonna actually open these coolers, but I'm gonna tell you a little bit about what's going on. I checked the wireless probes, the Yeti Hopper Flip 12 is at 42.2 degrees Fahrenheit on the inside, where the Rode 15 is at exactly 40 degrees Fahrenheit inside. So the Rode is running just a little bit cooler, which suggests that the Hopper Flip 12 is losing a little bit of a coolness to the atmosphere. We're gonna go ahead and use the temperature gun just to kind of check up on things. So on the back wall here, we have a temperature of 73 degrees. On the lid of the Rode 15, we have a temperature of 73. On the lid of the Hopper Flip 12, we have a temperature of 71. So again, the um, Hopper Flip 12 is, uh, the exterior is a little bit cooler, suggesting it's letting a little heat into the cooler and uh, will probably melt the ice uh, quicker than the Rode 15, but we'll find out pretty soon. Just checking the front of the coolers. The Rode is at 70, sorry, the Rode is at 69.2 and the Hopper Flip 12 is at 67.4. So the Rode in the area that has uh, ice in it is uh, letting a little heat in. It's um, a little cooler on the exterior than the back wall is. And the Hopper Flip 12, again, is about two degrees cooler on the exterior than the Rode 15, suggesting that it's a little bit less efficient. Now, I know that most of this ice is still gonna be frozen based on the previous tests that we did. So we're gonna go ahead and just let these sit overnight and we'll check again on them in the morning. Okay, so I think I'm gonna get the thermal camera out here just because the coolers have been sitting for a day or two and there's not a lot to see. I don't wanna keep opening the coolers up and letting warm air in. So here's the thermal imaging camera. And um, as you can see, the Hopper Flip 12 on the left is definitely a little bit cooler. It's running about two degrees cooler than the Rode 15. Now the Rode 15 at the very bottom, you can see a little bit of cooling compared to the lid, but the Hopper Flip 12, it's much more noticeable. Now two to three degrees doesn't sound like a lot, but in the world of thermal dynamics, that is just extra heat that's being leached into the Hopper Flip 12, where the Rode 15 is doing a better job insulating against the external energy trying to creep in and melt that ice. So the thermal camera does a pretty good job here showing the performance difference between the Hopper Flip 12 and the Rode 15. But keep in mind, the Hopper Flip 12 is a smaller cooler, so it's expected that it's not gonna perform quite as well as a larger hard side cooler. 
So that's the thermal imaging. I hope you found it interesting. Let's go ahead and get back to the results. Okay guys, so we are about 55 hours into this test, a little over two days, and uh, I noticed the temperature on the Hopper Flip 12 was starting to creep up just a little bit. We're currently at 43.5 degrees inside the Hopper Flip 12, and 40.8 degrees inside the Rode 15 here. So I thought we'd just turn the camera on and open these both up just to see where they're currently at. They're definitely keeping things cold still, but they are slowly starting to warm up. So after two days, really two days and seven hours, let's see how we're doing. So yeah, the beverages are definitely cold still. And the Hopper Flip 12, sorry, the Rode 15 has a lot of ice in the bottom. In fact, there's a large chunk of ice frozen around the Yeti ice I put in earlier, but there's also a fair amount of water in here. The soda is sitting on top of ice. It's not floating, but there is a fair amount of water in here. So I'm gonna close this up so we don't lose too much coldness to the environment here. And let's take a look at the Hopper Flip 12. And the Hopper Flip 12 definitely has more water in it. Um, in fact, almost all the water is, uh, almost all the ice is melted. It's very cold though. Like, ooh, it makes my hand hurt. Um, and the thermometer was basically floating in the water. So the water was about 40 degrees or so. Um, and the ice pack is, it's got a little ice in there still, but it's mostly melted. So at 55 hours, it's, man, it's really cold. It's hurting my hand. So at 55 hours, the ice in the Hopper Flip 12 is melted, but it's still very cold. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for a few hours longer, and we'll see how long it takes the Hopper Flip 12 to warm up now that the ice is all melted, compared to the Rode 15, which still has ice. I wanna emphasize that the inside of the Hopper Flip 12 here is very cold still, even though there's no ice uh, in there, it's mostly water. It, um, it must have just all just melted because uh, I noticed on the thermometer, it was just starting to creep up just in the last hour or so. So um, 55 hours for the Hopper Flip 12 is probably about the limit. And again, we're inside a entryway here with no sunlight that stays about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So in warmer weather, two days is probably what you're looking at for the Hopper Flip 12. The Rode 15 is still going pretty well. Let's see how it does over the next eight hours or so. Okay, so we're 24 hours later and um, the Hopper Flip 12 is now at 63.9 degrees. So only about six degrees below the room temperature. So like I said in the last video check-in, the ice is fully melted and it's just been getting warmer over the last 24 hours or so. Now in the Rode 15 here, I noticed the temperature just started to creep up. We're at 45 degrees on the inside here, according to my thermometer. So we're gonna go ahead and pop it open and see what it looks like on the inside. Still cold, I mean, it's still definitely food safe. And, uh, the water is very cold and there's no ice left in the Yeti ice. So yeah, these coolers stay between 42 and 43 degrees um, when there's ice in them and food. And um, when the ice fully melts, you will immediately start see the temperature start to creep up. And that's because ice takes a lot of energy to move through a phase change uh, from solid to liquid. Unlike raising the temperature of water one degree, to raise the temperature of ice one degree by melting takes significantly more energy. So the ice has fully melted in the Rode 15 now, so we're gonna go ahead and monitor the temperature over the next 24 hours, and I'm gonna put a chart of the results up right now. As we said at the beginning of the video, we pre-chilled each cooler for 12 hours with one large Yeti thin ice and one large Yeti medium ice in uh, each cooler. We then, we let that sit overnight for 12 hours, and then we came back, we put in one medium Yeti ice, and we uh, put in seven pounds of ice that you get at a gas station, a grocery store, anything like that, plus six cans of soda that were pre-chilled in my refrigerator. And um, right off the bat, we could see that the Rode 15 was sitting a little bit cooler. There's a more there's a larger delta between the ambient temperature and the inside temperature of the cooler. But the Hopper Flip 12 was doing pretty good. You'll notice that both of these coolers had relatively flat performance until the ice was completely melted. And then I kind of call that the breaking point of the cooler. For the Hopper Flip 12, it broke at 54.8 hours, which is really good. That's two days and 6.8 hours. So very serviceable as a weekend cooler for sure. 
Now the Rode 15 broke at 78.7 hours. That's three days and 6.7 hours. That's really good. That's 23.9 hours longer than the Hopper Flip 12. And I kind of thought it was interesting. I just, I don't know how Yeti tester coolers or designs them, but we were almost 24 hours longer with the Rode 15. And that almost seems like more than just a coincidence. Like it's designed to be a three day cooler and not just a two day cooler. So I thought the fact that our results were almost exactly 24 hours um, apart for the performance was rather interesting. I conducted the test for a full 107.7 hours, at which point the Hopper Foot 12 reached room temperature and had no delta between the interior of the cooler and the ambient air, so I ended the test at that point. Both coolers were no longer food safe and there was no point in proceeding with the test. Okay, and there we have it. So I think we have a clear winner. I mean, the results were pretty conclusive as we were just going through the um, test itself. The Rode 15 lasted almost a full 24 hours longer than the Hopper Flip 12. But the Hopper Flip 12 does have some advantages. It's a little bit smaller, it's easier to squeeze into small spaces and stuff. So it did very well with this over two days of cooling capability. So uh, depending on what your needs are, the Hopper Flip 12 could still be a great weekend cooler or something like that. Also, since it's not a huge cooler, I don't know how much food you're gonna be able to fit in there. Two days is probably pretty realistic for what it is. So what do you guys think? Did I do okay with the testing methodology of the cooler this time around? I think I did, that's pretty realistic. You're gonna put an ice block in there, a seven pound bag of ice, a few beverages and maybe some sandwiches or something, and away you go on your weekend trip. So I think that was a pretty realistic representation of uh, what these coolers can do compared to each other. And both coolers had a little wiggle room. The Hopper Flip 12 did a solid two days and about seven hours after that, and a little bit less. So in a warmer environment and stuff like that, it's still gonna do a solid two days for you. Where the Rode 15 did three days and almost seven hours. So again, it's going to easily hit that three day mark even in a warmer environment and not an interior room like I use for my testing. So you tell me, keyboard warriors, was this science enough for you? Did we do a good job? If not, let me know in the comments below. What did I miss this time? And if you guys are interested in seeing other coolers compared head to head like this, let me know in the comments below. I'd be happy to pick up a few coolers and see how different ones do. I'm not looking to do the huge coolers that you put in the back of a boat or on the back of an RV. I'm looking to do two to three day weekend type coolers because um, I think a lot of people are interested in this size of cooler, but due to their smaller size, they don't hold as much ice, making it a little bit trickier to evaluate which one is the right size for you. I hope you guys found this head-to-head -head comparison between the Hopper Foot 12 and the Rode 15 informative and maybe a little entertaining. I hope to see you in a future video. Make sure to hit that like and subscribe button and there's another video on the screen for you that I think you'll like. Cheers.